Uh, moving on to the final stitch, we're gonna catch this guy out. Right. Um, so before we do that, I also want to give it some frame to set it down uh, because uh, in the movie again, uh, it kind of like pops a little bit in the beginning uh, because of the hairstyle doesn't really hold. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to negative ten here, and so that I have like ten frames to make it go down here first. But it doesn't really go down until we start at frame zero. The reason for that is because the nucleus actually will have a starting frame here underneath the time attribute. You can see the starting frame is actually one. So I'm going to change that to also negative 10. It knows that it's going to start with negative 10. You can see now it's actually started there, settled down, and then we started our animation. So that way the entire movement will feel more natural. I do see a little bit more clipping there. I may go ahead and fix my collider there a little bit more. That's the field we use to do the collider. Right. So what I'm going to do here is go give this guy underneath uh, sculpting click there to add a new blend shape called uh, collider correct shape corrected or something like that. And just add a permanent blend shape on it to support the deformation we need. So I'm gonna make a big sub selection, check that out, and move up to prevent the clipping of there. Now this also can be done per basis uh, for uh, different animations, so that you can have different collider shapes to support different movement. I'm gonna toggle that on, right, and have this guy again. And go back to the frame negative 10. Let's do one more cache. Play fast. Sorry, just play fast. Alright, one more pass of simulation. I still have that little problem. One of the things I can do is go ahead and actually delete that that little strands of hair because it's kinda of like clipping already in the in the beginning anyways. So that's the problem from the character artist. Right? It's not gonna be that easy to fix in the simulation stage. <laughs> Alright, now that's not that hard to fix uh, for the character artist to do that, so you can go ahead and ask ask them to do that. You just need to go ahead and uh, use some of the density brush or cutting brush to cut out some of the hair strands. Okay, we'll go back to frame one. <laughs> uh, the face is a little bit twisted, but yeah. Alright, so let's go ahead and cache this out. To cache things out, you can go grab the guide you are using and go to the in guide. Or just the yeah, this guy, the description with an X on it. Uh, you go ahead and say description, cache, and export cache. Uh, actually, uh, create new cache. Okay, I'm gonna. You can name it something like um, hair cache. And then we can go start to end. I just need frame one to frame two hundred, and step by one. And that should be it. I'm gonna say create. Then to go through the process and then start caching out the animation. And the caching the thing we're caching now is not all those hair strands because we have uh, tens of thousands of hair strands. Uh, the actual thing that is cached out are actually just those yellow lines again, those are gut lines. And because that's exactly how we, what we want, right? We don't really simulate the hair strands one by one, the actual animation lives actually only on those yellow lines and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, um, so let me pause this, when it's done we can go back and load in the cache. Alright, so our caching is finished, now as you can see things are getting a little crazy. Uh, let's take a look at our uh, structure here, you can see we have this one more thing called in get cache. And let's go to a few frames. You can see that the get line is actually doing fun. It's just not affecting our uh, actual hair. Okay. Let me actually toggle it off and on again. I also toggle the other guy off. 
as you can see, no matter what I do, it doesn't really do the job, which is kind of like a little bit frustrating. Right. And until now, I don't know why it doesn't do that. As you can see, it's reading everything properly. It's not muted. The other guys are muted. So, yeah. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and delete this guy now. And I'm gonna go to in guide and say add modifier and add a new curve to splint. Okay. And this curve to splint doesn't have any curve. So we have to import a bunch of curves. And that's gonna be our cache. So I'm gonna go load the cache we created earlier. Just open that. And it's not showing up either. Uh, let's go back to the top and take a look at the input form. From is gonna say input from the curves, but we don't have any curves here. So we're gonna disable that and input from at the actual cache here. Let's see now the cache is dropping those guys down. Right, let's switch to some frame later, but you can see it's still like doing the simulation. And try to do the simulation at some point for some reason. If you go ahead and play the cache though, it's actually doing quite fine. It's reading the cache now. It's not simulating anymore. Uh, it is still slow because we are using a. Uh, I can go ahead and disable the visibility of that. Uh, we're actually this, the the lag is, the the lagging effect is actually caused by those hair strands. They're just too expensive to calculate in real time, rendering wise, or even loading wise. So that's why they're kind of slow. But it's fun, right? Uh, right now we have a cache readouts that we can use so that no simulation is involved. Uh, I can prove that if I go to the uh, nucleus and say you're not going to be enabled at all. And let's play the animation again. You can see we're still getting our simulated, uh, simulated results. Right. So nothing is being dynamic, dynamically calculated anymore. It's just basically our higher simulation. I hope there is a way that we can maybe uh, go click on some of the frames just do that, but it doesn't really update even our simulation is turned off. It's not reading. Sometimes it's reading. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't. It's 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 really weird uh, how it works. But I wish you can just go to that frame. Let me turn it off and on again. Nah, not doing that. So, but it does read it. And so that's something good. Anyway. Uh, so that's gonna be it for this tutorial, I guess. So I hope that everything here works. And I don't know where those guys are. <laughs> Something was wrong, but yeah. Uh, if you ask me, uh, you know, is it is it feasible to use hair simulation in a student work like a CC's production? Uh, I would say maybe not. It just takes a lot of time to set up. You have to learn grooming and you have to do the simulation, but it, it is feasible now to do it without simulation. Just do the shape, right? Sculpt out the hair using XGen and just don't simulate it at all. It will work right out of, right out of the box. It will follow the rig uh, as long as you select the head and we are doing the hair, right? It will follow right away like the bomb here on the back. This bomb doesn't have any simulation. Uh, if you want simulation, you will have some hassle deal, dealing with that. And if unless you want to be a VFX artist, you don't really want to deal with that. Okay. Uh, but for real production, of course, people are having their own different kind of like uh, ways of doing hair. And what's more interesting is that uh, uh, the action they are using in the actual studio in like Disney is looking very different. <laughs> I think they're having a, their own private version that is much better performance-wise. I have heard uh, or watched that video about the production of Moana, 
and they're talking about the animators can visualize the hair in real time in the viewport when they're animating because they kind of just need to see the fur on the body when they're doing animation to really make sure that silhouette doesn't that doesn't mess up when they add the fur, the, the fur. so they do have a real-time way of doing this I don't know how uh, so again those things the technology that we have available to us is primitive uh, it's only been like how, how many years 50 years or more that we have been doing CG right so it's not a very long development either and because of that I, I think that we still have a long way to go when it comes to real reality simulation uh, and people keep talking about Unreal Engine is doing the photorealistic rendering uh, the, the truth is the truth is it's not photorealistic it's fake photorealistic it's not calculating in a photorealistic way it's cheating a lot the shader itself calculates uh, the subsurface scattering not the lighting no lighting bouncing in out it's using shader to fake that uh, and a lot of lightings are baked we still have a long way to go when it comes to computation power and things like that program software you know tools so yeah that's gonna be it that's gonna be it for the air creation part i hope that everything here is useful uh, i do also uh, want it to have some comment from you guys if you find some other like better workflows uh, but again, uh, you know, there are always many different workflows. There are plugins like owner tricks, uh, like shave and haircut, like GMH2, uh, in ZBrush there is uh, Fever Mesh that can also export curves and convert that curves into guides to create extreme hair. Right, There's many ways. Uh, there is where you can use N-Clouds to simulate and put hair texture on it, right? All those different cool things to do. Uh, but for now, I think extreme is the most straightforward way because you just do it here and just make it dynamic here by right clicking and then you know actually go select the guide and make that uh, dynamic all right so thanks for watching see you next time